Hey golfers, and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. It is episode 38, and we have Mr. Tyler Fitzel back with us today. Um, Master club fitter, uh, as you guys know, and been on the YouTube channel several times, been on the podcast a few times. Um, Tyler, thanks for joining, first of all. Uh, yeah. You actually, it's a, technically a day off for you, so the fact yep. that you're even here is is really cool that you're taking the time to do well, it's this. it's easy. It's like eight degrees outside. Yeah, I can't that's golf. that's true. So it's uh it's really the, is it the coldest it's been all winter almost I mean we've had well, the, we've had the cold spells yeah we but did like I don't know this is just depressing because it, yeah. it looked like we were gonna get past another winter storm yeah and then it we were gonna us. have that again and well now it looks the, like it's gonna happen this it's weekend. the whole upper Midwest too yeah. it's not I mean obviously we're talking out of Minnesota here but uh, the reality is that the weather patterns have changed and everyone up here is cold everyone's gonna get some some pretty substantial snow over yeah. the weekend. Yeah, or at least a, something that they have to go move around. Yeah, it's yeah. it's sad. I know the uh, high school golf seasons have just started. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, well, and we've had know, and the warmest weather they've had is like back on you know in January yeah. or February. We've had uh, probably like two months of the most um, you know unreal weather in terms of like it's been there's no water. Right. Uh, so it has been really really super dry, but there's also been no snow. You know, it's all melted off because there was basically nothing to begin with, and then it's warm enough. That probably a couple dozen golf courses regularly were open. Oh yeah, and people golfing. So never seen it this early. Right. Um, um, looks like we're gonna be on pause here for yeah. a little bit. But you know that's um, we if we get to golf in February up here, it's usually a big deal. We'll we'll maybe take a couple weeks off in March if that right. means playing it playing some golf in February. Right. So, um, well, good, Tyler. Um, we haven't talked to you since really kind of the beginning of the year when some of these products were just launching and, yeah. and um, I kind of wanted to just, first of all, just kind of run through sort of the types of clubs and get your take on things, how they've been doing in the fitting bays. And so yeah. um, let's just start at the top of the bag with driver. Uh, yeah. I know you were very excited about the AI smoke um, yeah. line. Um, yeah. What's, what's been your favorite driver or drivers in the fitting bays this year? You know, we, I look at it in two ways. Um, drivers in 2024 aren't all drivers that came out in 2024. Okay. So if you look at it this way, right, like what's what's been a new uh, a brand new club for the market this year versus, say for instance, Ping or Titleist, they've yeah. been out they've been out um, a full summer yeah. already, and uh, they both continue to do really well. Titleist hasn't added any added anything to their lineup, yeah, but it still is one of the best drivers, um, you know, with four models to pick from and so many different options. But also Ping is really super solid in that game and. I put them at the top um, as well. The new 10K is performing well. Um, we're, we're seeing really nice results with it. Uh, the beauty of it is like whether or not the 10K is your is going to work for you. Uh, there's still the Max. There's still the LST, the SFT. Like there's still other versions to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just doing a fitting yesterday, and I tried two different versions. Uh, I did a, a 10K. And then I, I said, no, nah, let's just try the Max. And all of a sudden, the Max just maybe it's the shape, the look, whatever it yeah. was. It, it just becomes a hit. So they, that's one part of it. The other part of it is what's new on, in 24. And two things really stick out. Uh, first of all, Cal Callaway is really doing well. Yeah. The AI smoke and that lineup again, when you have the ability to move weight around so you can move it forwards, you can move it backwards, you've got a skirt, um, you have a draw version, you have a Max Fast version, like, all of these versions are giving the golfer better options. So, so like the fitter as well. It's giving us better options to, to get someone mm -hmm. um, fine fit. The other one is just Cobra has really, really? stepped up this year. Yeah. And they've um, they really produce in all the categories we're looking for. They're really good with ball speed. Uh, they're really good with spin. They're really good with adjustability. You can move some weights around forwards, backwards. Uh, you have some shaft adjustability. You can you know change the the setting on that. Um, you know a nice stable of of shafts. All the companies have great shafts. Yeah. Um, to start with, but when you put that together, and all of a sudden you're looking at, uh, you start talking about any Ping, any Callaway, any Titleist, some TaylorMade. You start talking about Cobra. There's so many choices. Yeah, so, and I've heard it's a great year for it drivers. Is. Um, it is. I, all the fitters have been saying that. So it's it's yep. a it's a great time to get fit for a driver. And it is. And and we talk about know, maybe trade up the old one you got. Right? Yeah. One of the major things with drivers is is we're always usually just trying to control launch and spin. 
you know, and, and the first thing is to find a loft. Mm -hmm. So you find a head and, and a loft that's going to work. We, we fine tune on adjustments. And that's one of the things that I found this year is really, really easy with. Um, pretty much if we write, we, we grab any one of these clubs, there's something that, that's going to work pretty well. Um, and I, I don't know if I've seen a year where the equipment on the market right now is all better than pretty much everything that was on the market two or three years ago. Yeah. Like Interesting. Yeah. All, Cause I know all, there's been over the years, there's been some series, I guess that have really stayed on the top. You yeah. know, I, I, th I think back to G 400 as being one yeah. of those, um, Taylor made Sim was another one. The original Sim series is yep. one that, uh, people loved for years after. Uh, yeah. so that's, uh, that's good though, to see that the drivers are, are performing as to, you know, the standards that I guess what we're being told from the manufacturers. Yeah. So. And we're, you know, we're, we're going to start seeing a lot of the 24 stuff coming in used yeah. because there are going to be plenty of people that they, they've purchased it. They maybe didn't, you know, it wasn't maybe their fit um, from, we, we see that every day, yeah. you know, we're, we're a used club company, but the reality is like, we're just a, a, a golf club company where the clubs come in and if it's going to work for you, you know, right. we're, we're going to get you in that. And so last you were talking about pings or t uh, Titleists or even Callaways um, from previous models, those second, third generations, mm -hmm. we have a lot of that stuff, which is still really, really super good. So if you are looking for, right. you mm -hmm. know, if you're looking to upgrade and, you, and we don't want to try to break our budget, like going all in on that stuff. We certainly actually have uh, a lot of great inventory, yeah. Oh, yeah. and that that is the absolute beauty of it. Mm -hmm. Is like someone comes in, you sign up for a used fitting because we know we're not maybe going looking at that brand new thing. We have so many good drivers. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you go into any of the stores, and there's a ton of yeah. the options there. Plus, obviously, the any of the products are available on SecondSpeed.com. So, yep. Um, let's go to kind of fairy woods and, and hybrids. Yeah, kind of the the sort of the combo combination there. Is there a model that's really jumped out at you in fitting so far in twenty twenty four? You know, th that one's a little bit trickier. And I say I always say that about fairways and hybrids because it tends to be like most people hang on to fairways and hybrids yeah, right. way longer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ping, Titleist, I'd say TaylorMade, Callaway, uh, they dominate the market with their fairways and their hybrids. I would say that for me personally, I love using something I can make more adjustable. So you take like a Titleist or a Callaway and you have four degrees of adjustability. The yeah. same thing happens in their hybrids too. So I can take the loft only. Yeah. yeah. I can take a 20 up to 21, 22. I can take it down to 19. Um, that's more adjustability for the long term, And that tends to be the, the, the best option because yeah. you can come to me and say, oh, you know, it's flighting a little low. Well, let's turn the loft yeah. up and see what happens. So because um, you're referring to you know the when you fit a golfer into a particular fairway or hybrid and mm -hmm. and at at during that first fitting they might be in a certain setting or a certain spec yeah. that in a follow up fitting or or maybe you have that relationship with the golfer and yeah. they say you know two months later well this is kind of flying a little bit lower than I it right. was when I first had it all right well let's tune the loft back up right you know something like that and yeah there's more options with well with we encourage that there. discussion too is like even through our fittings we're saying hey listen come to us with any issues concerns topics if you you know you want to adjust something yeah well, but I also think too is um that not don't get me wrong like it's not like oh they don't don't worry about some of these other ones um because there are adjustability in in tailor made there's adjustability in ping um mm -hmm. The, the biggest thing is that you're usually looking at loft. We're usually, wait, the, the adjustability is awesome for all of these clubs now because I can, I can more fine tune something. I really need something that's just a little bit higher, but I don't want it to spin. We have, you know, models that don't spin as mm -hmm. much. We have models that spin a little bit more. We have models that, you know, have more weight in the heel to help correct a little bit of the rightness or the leftness. And so we have that ability and that's a huge piece of the puzzle. So on fairways right now, I don't know that there's a leader as much okay. as everything. If you're looking for a fairway or a hybrid, it is absolutely um, the, the time to do it because there's so many options. And that's what we want to do in a fitting is weed that out. But I, you, you're, you're not mm -hmm. going to pick a bad one. Yeah. You're just not. They're, they're, they're also solid and they're crisp and you know if there's a look for you mm -hmm. in that kind of thing. 
What about the, because, I mean, next we're going to go to irons. And yeah. Not that you have to go by each subcategory of iron, but right. um, is there a model of iron that is standing out then? Because you said in fairways and hybrids, there's not really one that sticks out. Is yeah. there a model or mo- maybe a couple models that really stand um, out in the irons? I would say, yeah, that there, there is. I, I probably start back with um, the Callaway for a moment because the AI Smoke iron, as well as the high launch that okay. they've got, has really both for quality, for price, and performance, a, a great option. Really? Yeah. And one Which of the, one are you fitting more of, HL or the uh, Probably just the regular smoke to that. Okay. But so this goes for any iron in that matter. The iron we choose in kind of the categories between more blade-like or right. mid-size or, or more game improvement or, or larger, uh, that it, depends, it depends on launch and spin, right? right? So if you have someone that's coming in and, and they're – they're not getting the launch and spin out of one of these irons, but they're just getting the ball speed. It's it's not going to usually work great. What we have to do is we have to get that ball in the air. Mm-hmm. And we saw that happen a few years ago with with new high launch or HL. Um, the the companies are in tune with this and so started increasing the loft again right. to help get more launch and spin. So someone may come in with the AI smoke and they may not be getting enough launch or spin with it. They're really consistent numbers. But if you go to the HL, we can get a little bit yeah. more loft on it. Uh, the same is true in, in kind of Ping's world, too. And Ping has introduced now their Blueprint S&T. Mm-hmm. They've also got out the new i530 and the G730. Yeah, they got the whole spectrum. I mean, you go they Blueprint do. T to G730 and everywhere yeah. in between. There's several models. There's a whole spectrum of irons, you know, from yeah. the most players iron you can look at with the Blueprint T. Yeah. And then up to the G730. And so I find myself... Uh, Working with maybe a Blueprint S to an I two thirty to maybe an I I five thirty, you know, or or a, a G four thirty. The yeah. the, mo- the models really depend on on launch and spin. It's kind of the same thing. Um, the key factor for for any fitting is really kind of looking at four things with the golf ball: ball speed, launch, spin, and then its direction. And so that being said, if we get something that launches appropriately, spins appropriately. That's usually going to be the one that starts to get us down the right path yeah. because um, if you can't get the ball in the air with a seven or a six or a five iron, right, then we have to start looking at either a different model of iron or we have to go into something different, like maybe yeah. a hybrid or something. Yeah. Um, I, I would say uh, uh, one of the surprises to me is how still how Sirixon, like the ZX7, mm-hmm. uh, maintains its ball speed with like 33 degrees of launch or a loft on it. Yeah. It maintains ball speed. It's very forgiving. Yeah. Another one that's hit really well. Um, Larry will say this too. Uh, he said to me last night. He says, "Why don't you just keep the Wilson staff with you? I, I've gone through fittings and uh, I've I've put that in people's hands and it's walked out the door um, a lot. And the, the reason is like they've got a really really good ball speed, but with loft. It's 34 degrees. It's got a huge cavity to it, but it's not jumbo." Yeah. So now all of a sudden you have feel, you get launch, you get spin. Is that a forged? It is. Uh, it's a fully it forged club. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And it, uh, that's certainly a brand that obviously decades ago, Wilson right. was the top of the golf equipment game. But yeah. now it's not necessarily as popular. But well, yeah, and the I irons would, are still, I mean, yeah, the, the, they, they're beautiful. The staff the CB, the cavity back, yeah. it, it has really good jump or ball speed. Interesting. So we've, we've seen some more ball speed. It's just. The, maybe a lot of tungsten they've got in it. They've got it really low. Um, but the other part of that becomes, like, that doesn't mean, like, for instance, their blade is going to be for everyone. And it doesn't mean, oh I, yeah you know, the the jumbo club that, you know, the seven iron is really just a, a four iron. You know, some of the, and this goes for every company, right? They've got clubs where they've de-lofted them so yeah, much. Oh, yeah. So that's why loft, launch, and spin are so important on it. Um, find the right type of loft if the book oh, get yeah. the ball in the air. And then it becomes more about like how's that feel, how's that look, right? Uh, you know, well, it's performance that you, wise. You know, because I know you know Strixon has been great. Yes, They've, their last couple series have been mm-hmm. awesome. Um, the original ZX models, and then now the Mark IIs are even better. Yeah. Um, and then it, I'm, I love that you threw Wilson in there too, because that's a there's a there's a group of, of commenters on our YouTube channel that frequently ask for mm-hmm. Wilson. You know, where's the Wilson testing? Yeah. You know, and we don't do a lot of it, and a lot of that is just kind of the trying to match, you know, the demand for it. But if there's right. demand for it and the products are 
performing well, then yeah, they are. We'll we'll throw them in there a little bit more. So yeah, if you look at like the broad categories and you talk about a cavity back, everyone's got one, and they're most most of the companies have something that's forged. Yeah. Um, it it'll stand up with any of them, and if for some reason this clicks with you, right, that's what we want. Yeah. I absolutely had someone come in with um with Miras and say, well, mm. I, you know, I want to try Miras, and we tried a couple of Miras, and I said, try this once because I know from just experience that the heads are made uh, for the Wilson. A lot of their forgings are done in in uh, uh, high high end forging houses. Yeah, right. Like all the equipment is. It's not like this. They don't do it, you know, down the road here in the back in someone's back garage or anything. It's like yeah. all really high end. And I, you know, I put this in his hand and he hits it and he goes, "What is this?" Well, hit a couple more, a couple more, and a couple more, and all yeah. of a sudden we tried and we tried five or six different iron heads. You know couple of shots and it wasn't even close and he's just like i never would have thought of it but then yeah. if, i mean that's probably a similar reaction to most people like, yeah they you know you think taylor made you think titleist ping mm-hmm. callaway you yeah know, you think of these other ones but um that's interesting that's good i think that'll be something that um i don't know people watching this probably didn't expect but that's something they can take note of if they're going to get fit this year yeah and i think just from a fitter's perspective we talk about this amongst ourselves is like try to broaden out uh, we're we're non commissioned. We you know right. we're yeah. we're there's, unbiased there's, in terms. There's of like, no advantage to you guys no. pushing a particular brand no. or you know even if it's if you have a brand you personally like it doesn't right. that doesn't help anybody to you know I push that to your fitting. I can't tell you how many times I fit a club that I, I I'm never going to own right right that that's what I do all day long. I've got but I'm I'm just trying to make sure that we find something that that performs well and mm-hmm. and. We, we've got a lot of great options yeah. in that right now too yeah so um in the in the wedges there's not really anything i shouldn't say anything new because obviously the, the sm10s are yeah new, the but, sm10s you know, came out there's and the s159s are new as well but yeah know, is there anything i know and, and wedge fitting is a little bit different in the bay you know you got um you don't have sand to hit out of you don't have bunkers right. to test out of, you know you don't have thick rough and different lies to test but um have you gotten any feedback maybe from people that have been fitting to any wedges or um, you know what's the, the, that like the general thing about wedges as we talk about wedges is pretty much every single company is using the same material right they're using the same sort of um, carbon steel mm. very very similar they're using the same sort of processes to make their grooves and you know to to put mills on the face yeah. and the shapes are very similar um what ends up happening with with wedges ends up becoming a little bit more of the I don't want to call it a gimmick, but it's the marketing spin to it, right? So, for instance, if you've got a raw face, like TaylorMade's yeah. got their raw face, or you, Callaway does too, um, you get into Ping. Ping completely redone, uh, redid their their lineup with the uh, S159. Really, really good. Mm-hmm. Like, the look is a lot more wedge-like. They're not quite as bulky. But then um, you look at, at SM10s, and Volki has produced an extremely consistent, real solid, number one selling number yep. one played wedge and the thing about the when we start talking about wedges and is there anything new the reality is there's not a lot new and that's because i think a lot of these companies have gone gotten to a place where they don't want to change it too much because as soon as you start to change something too much right it's not a Vokey anymore well i really like the the 10 the 9 the 8 the 7 but i don't like this one you know you could just change one little thing about the right. shape yeah, they, so, want, they want to still revert back to what works and what yeah. people have liked. Um, and I really think that a lot of this, well, two things. I had I had, uh, I had had a fitting, and I made a comment to the customer because I was very confused about, well, what about this bounce? Well, what about this grind? Well, what about this number? Well, what about this number? You know, the questions keep coming. That's great. Um, I said, this sound, sounds like, con- I said, this kind of is a little confusing. And he says, yeah, it really is. I said, well, you can blame the marketing because the reality is like there's a loft and there's some stuff that they do on the bottom yeah. and then you play. Yeah. Like every wedge is that way too. So yeah, right. um, it, we get into that. And I think that's a little bit of a deeper dive that needs discussion um, when we have an opportunity is to really look at like, what does bounce do? What is, uh, you know, what's the leading edge, the trailing edge? We talk about the bottoms of these things. It really just depends on what you want to do with the bottom of that thing. Yeah, if you it, know, if you know what you're doing, with it's the not bottom. really helpful to know all these things about what bounces, what grind no. is, all these things. If you 
don't know how you want to use the wedge in the first place. Yeah, or that that the, part. Yeah, that part is more important than knowing. Hey, what is bounce? And there's great tools that we have. If you go to uh, Vokey's website or if you go to Ping's website, yeah, you have an opportunity to like wedge fit. You can do the wedge selector tools. I know you guys are using Cle- these in every oh wedge ev- fitting, every day. You know? And every even day. sometimes with the iron, like an iron fitting, you might just say, yes. all right, well, if we're gonna tack some wedges on, yeah, here's what we recommend based on. Well, what and, your numbers suggest here. You know, you can you, you can do these things with these companies, and the reality is, like, they're they're trying to to get to the same point without testing that we're getting to. Right. It's like we're trying to go through a process that yeah. gets you down to okay, if you like open face on your wedge, but you don't like this out of a bunker, versus I I, I like to square this up, but I really want to use this one out of the bunker. Those are choices where we start talking about what's happening on the bottom yep. because of how you use it, and right. and those are important. That's why a wedge fitting is is awesome because we have the time to actually go through those things. Um, plus, you know, it's free with purchase. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like we're, we're talking about, like, number one, we'll answer your questions. We'll help show you what we're talking about. We'll test it so you can see what we're talking about there, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 great. And, and you know, you talk to – I mean, a wedge game is as important as really anything, almost as important as putting yeah. to lowering your scores and, and, and improving. Obviously, short game is – vital air so we'll talk about putters a little bit yeah. at the end yeah i know sure. we got a couple models we wanted to go go over a little bit but yeah um the next section here i kind of wanted to talk about um kind of club fitting misconceptions this is a fun yeah. topic because um it kind of it was sparked as an idea for a conversation because i there's you know i got a bunch of buddies that you know play a lot of golf and mm-hmm. they're always asking me questions about their equipment and some of the, the questions that they ask, and aren't, they're not bad questions. It's just I think they've been maybe fed a, a, an incorrect narrative prior right. about the fitting elements of a club or, or um, things of that nature. So um, I guess I wanted to ask you to kind of get things rolling if there's a, a misconception that you hear from customers, hear from golfers maybe the most or a really common one that right. you kind of always end up talking about and trying to correct. <laughs> well, number one. Every single customer that says, well, the shaft is is all that really matters. The shaft drives right. it. The shaft is the engine. No, absolutely not. Um, the shaft is an extremely important piece of the club. Mm-hmm. But the reality, and I've heard this, I've heard other people on, suppose, talking on, on other channels and yeah, golf yeah. shops and other fitters outlets, yeah. that are talking about, like, the shaft is the most important thing. And um, I look at it this way. The club head hits the ball. Mm-hmm. There's no way that the shaft can be more important than the head because the shaft isn't making contact with the ball. So we're talking about the technology, the ball speed. Well, the head's going to drive some of that in the, the construction and technology. Yep. Um, the loft on that. Loft and face angle mean more than anything for every single shot you hit. So loft is one of the huge things. And then how you use that yeah. in terms of its face angle, that matters more. But I, I, I remember talking with the lead engineer at Fujikura years ago, and, and I said that. People always come up to me and say, well, the shaft is it, and the shaft is it. What do, I, you know, what do I need? And he said, the shaft, the swing, and the club head are equally important. You can't have one without the other. I can't, a shaft is an inert object, so it's not going to do anything. You're going to do it to it. Yeah. And then the head is the same thing. The, having having a head down on the end of it doesn't mean that you're even going to hit the ball. Like the swing matters, okay. the shaft matters, and the club head matters. Yeah. And I would look at it um, the the for most people, um, the, they understand some of these basics. They're talking about I want to hit it. I want to hit it longer, higher, farther, right. straighter. That's exactly what we want for you as well. But I think the next piece of the puzzle comes back into the dynamics of what the misconception of like the club's going to make this happen yeah so i think that's a good point because mm-hmm. i think there's you know there's obviously an element of or a section of golfers that they just they know they need to get a, the correct club head the correct shaft they need all these things um some a lot of golfers don't even really think about shaft as part of the whole fitting process and then yep. there's also this category you're referring to where I, I i don't even i don't need a new club head you know i've had this this three wood or this iron set for eight years but yeah. I'm starting to launch it too low or whatever. Uh, now yeah. I need to get my shaft. I need to get a shaft in there that'll yes. help it launch higher. And it's like, well, 
or you could yeah. find the club head that has a lower center of gravity. Yes. Get that thing in the air. More and loft, a new shaft. Yeah. Right. And then you'll have yeah, much higher loft and much more. That's something more that happens for. a lot where, where someone comes in either with a broken shaft or an older driver and says, you know, maybe I'm getting a little older or a little slower and I may, maybe need a softer shaft and maybe I just need regular flex. Yeah. The reality is that if that if that shaft isn't appropriate for you, then the club probably is not either mm-hmm. because it's a marriage of that, yeah. right? You might have a different grip. It Especially if a- you were fit before for this product yeah. or for this club. Yeah. The fitter is trying to, like you mentioned, sort of find the right marriage of the two yeah. that works for your swing at that time. Yeah, and that's the other piece that really comes into play there. Um, your swing changes. Yes. The club doesn't. Yes, it does. I say this all the time. The club is the the constant here. It's not the variable. What you do with the club is the variable. And so we we get that a lot where, um, hey, well, you know, I'm thinking this is stiff and I don't need that. Yeah, but it's also 17 degrees. You also need like 22 degrees. (laughs) So it's not just the club. It's not just the shaft in that. Um, Another point about shafts that actually gets into the misconfusion side of this, too, is like where we talk about shafts. This is a low launching shaft. Well, put it this way the best players at the elite level have low launching shafts and they hit it a mile in the air so how does that happen well it's because that's what their swing does that's what their equipment does um vice versa to that you know we see someone who goes uh maybe i'll put a softer shaft or like a mid kick yeah and all of a sudden it launches lower than the, the the low one that they were just trying why does that happen well if the shaft creates more leg it might hang down and create um, a lower loft. It depends on how the player that, swings. Absolutely. The transition and everything. Is, right. I, attack angles. Right. I can be moving up. Shaft I can be flex moving is down. not just swing speed, which is another one that yes. it's kind of a misconception in itself is that I think a lot of players think, well, I swing my driver this fast, so I need yeah. stiff flex, right? Or I yeah. need extra stiff because I swing my driver 110. It's like, right. well, maybe and probably. But right. if you are if you have a pretty slow transition from the backswing to the downswing, yes. You don't generate a lot of lag, and you might not need extra stiff because that could actually harm you. Yeah, and I, I, you know, you look at it. I, I, I kind of say it of all my fittings. I fit based on length and strength. We're gonna have certain measurables that we want to get based on, on body type, how tall you are, arms, things like that. But uh, I say the strength part really falls into the idea of how heavy and stiff can I get before it's not gonna work for you. Mm-hmm. And the the reality is like. Um, if you just mentioned that, if you have a handle and you pull on that handle hard, if that comes like real aggressive in your transition, that changes where the flex goes. I had a guy yesterday, we talked about the transition in the flex and he wanted to test auto flex. Great. Well, hit, let's hit auto yeah. flex. He says, man, this thing's that, you know, feels really whippy back here. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about it is that when you pull on a handle, the flex starts here and goes backwards. And he immediately goes, oh, I never thought of that. Great. Now we're set. You're really hard. You pull on that. And I said, you'd probably be best in something like uh, maybe a Fujikura Ventus that has a, a, the Velocore. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, I have one in mind. I said, well, then we're done. Like, yeah, your yeah. curiosity with Autoflex is solved. Right. So I actually went over and I and took the head and I grabbed the Ventus that he's already got. And I put it in there. And all of a sudden, bam, it's like perfect. And yeah. It's not that shaft as much as it is the, the what the shaft does. Yeah. Because now every company's got a very similar shaft to the Ventus. They've got strong. They've got really stiff. They've got really stable. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- then it becomes, you know, does this feel better? Because that's what a shaft really ends up becoming. It's a feedback mechanism. It's transferring the energy that you put into it yeah. down into that head, and it matters. Mm-hmm. But it's not the first thing we start with. No, it's not. It's not. Um, um, the same thing is true as if you talk about irons when you're doing a fitting. Let's say we pick three or four iron heads and we're, we want to try a Titleist TaylorMade mm-hmm. Callaway Ping. I'm going to pick at the beginning the same shaft. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want variables. I want to know. You want to keep it constant. Correct. Find the club head that works. Right. If, if you're coming in with a certain shaft and this is what you've played for a while, I'm going to put that one in and we'll just hit that one with these four and see what happens. Because then it's like, hey, the Titleist really wins the day for its look and feel. Great. Now let's try some different shafts yep. and see what ha- happens with right. that as well. Yeah, yeah. I know that's been the process since I've been here for the mm-hmm. fitters. Is start clubhead, get that dialed in, get yeah. the specs there dialed in, then go to the shaft, right. figure out the rest. You know. Um, then the other one I wanted to get your opinion on too was 
this is, I think, the most common one maybe in the entire golf landscape is that sort of I'm not good enough to get fit. Oh, I'm yeah. You know, that's a, that's a popular one. It and is. I I think it is um, really hard because a lot of people. Well, the same thing is true of, of golf clubs. Someone will come in and go, well, I, I, don't, I, I know I can't hit that. And yeah. the, the reality is, like, we might have missed the club that was perfect for you because in your own head. And a great example of this was um, my last fitting yesterday was not a hybrid guy. Like, mm. absolutely detests, said no. You know, took a swing and goes, I don't even want to look at this. <laughs> Just and, disgusted by okay, hybrids. <laughs> but, but I, you know, and so in that realm... I have to prove to him why the fitting is so important. So he's like, I'd just rather do an iron. Okay. I grabbed a two iron, um, like, uh, like a utility driving a, yeah, yeah. a utility, a crossover by ping. And he hits it and he hits it really solid. And he gets it to go kind of the distance that we're looking at. And he takes about five or six swings. And two of them are the distance. The other ones aren't even as good as his five iron. And so I looked at it and I said, just try that. Just do this for me. Okay. And I grabbed one that's adjustable and I, I, I made some adjustments to it and I put it in his hand and all of a sudden it, it just pops off the face. He goes, well, okay, that was really felt good. Another <laughs> one, another one. And we, we looked at the consistency as they're all going the same distance. Now they're doing what we want and they're actually pretty tight. And I put up the version between the two iron and the hybrid. Yeah. I said, okay, I know you're not a hybrid guy. But if you miss this two iron, like you can't afford 50 yards, you didn't miss the hybrids, but even the ones that you did are still going exactly the same distance. Yeah. So the, re the uh, it comes down to this idea, um, that last fitting of the day, it's a great example of what you wanted, um, what you asked me for. And that was people don't think they get fitted. His buddy has been begging him for eight years he's got extremely old equipment yeah. eight years and he knows someone here at corporate who continues to tell him go get fit go get fit go get fit he <laughs> finally came in and about 10 minutes into this thing his buddy came with him 10 minutes in is this is so awesome i can't believe i didn't do this sooner right it doesn't matter the skill level because the reality is golf is not about the skill level. It's about what you make it. It's your mm -hmm. goals. It's your, it's what you want to do with it. We get people that come in and like, I really just need one club. Perfect. Let's find a club for you so you can get out and play and have fun. Yeah. Like that's what happens too. Uh, you know, sometimes we go with a set that's maybe just every other club. Sometimes we go with, you know, right, like a nine, a nine or ten set. Right. Club it, set. it could be yeah. um, it could be someone who's just beginning. I had a young, young uh, kid in yesterday. I've known his dad forever. We've golfed forever and ever. And he's like, my kid's getting into golf, never golfed, put a club in his hand, you know, showed him how to grip the club because he didn't even know that part yeah. of it. And all of a sudden he's just kind of making these wild swings pop off goes the ball and dad's just like holy me this could be good yeah yeah just the happiest kid in the world yeah. you know turns around right away yeah did you see that you know that's that's what can happen for anyone mm -hmm. if they just give us a chance on it yeah yeah and i think there's also an element of if you're really trying to go by handicap and improve your handicap yeah probably the higher handicaps are actually going to see more improvement on their handicap right. than someone lower Yep. Handicap getting fit. So. Agreed. Um, all right, let's get let's talk about these putters. Yeah, the new putters for 2024. The kind of the big couple of sort of releases that we've got this year. Um, we've got the ping, uh, the extension, I guess, of the ping. Yes. PLD milled putters. Right. Um, four models in there that I actually got to go down at ping and test. Um, fantastic. And um, some really and they, some really those neat, things are awesome. They look they, they look are. great. Yeah. And some other that you can do the ping. PLD milled plus the plus is where you get to customize it. Too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden we start, start talking about stampings. We start talking about colors. We start talking about like some of those things I did an order the other day. So cool. Yeah. Really. Neat. Yeah. And, uh, of the four new, um, shapes, I guess. Yeah. I know there's, you know, there's a whole uh, like further extension of this, the PLD putters out there, right? There's a, right. there's a bunch of them, not just these four, but, um, the, the alley blue four is my favorite of them. It's yep. like a compact, it's a mallet, and it's certainly a high MOI mallet shape, you know, something yeah. modern looking, but it's a little more compact, and it's like squared off a little bit. And that, personally, it fits my eye as someone who right. plays 
the Harwood as of right now, which is a big kind of squared off mallet. Yep. Um, but that one just is, is clean. Plus, you know, it's got kind of a slight arc hosel. Yeah. For someone like me who's kind of almost in between slight arc and straight, I'm kind of like right in the middle of the two. Right. So I, I really enjoyed that. And we had a, if you, um, if you're listening to this, haven't seen it, there's a string report video on the putters yep. on YouTube to go check out. We had a session with James Lee, the fitter down there. Yeah. He's awesome. Uh, oh, he's awesome. Also, I think you just got to check it out for his outfit, by the way, if you haven't yet. Oh, his outfits. I Every time I've, <laughs> I've been down there, the outfits are outrageous. Yeah. He was wearing a, what was it? A pink shirt. Yeah. With pink pants. Uh-huh. And he had a blue, like a light blue belt, light yeah. blue hat, and then like customized like foot joy shoes. Was he? It was uh, good. It was yeah, really good. Uh, he's a veteran. Um, uh, was it Air Force or, I mean, oh, or Navy? He mentioned it too. We were talking about it. I think. I think it was Air Force. It might have been. Yeah. I think yeah. that's that sounds right. Yeah. Um, but he's awesome. Oh my gosh. But, yeah. So anyway, we did a session with him, and he was kind of you know using the pink putter app and fit me a little yeah. bit, and and so uh, and anyway, we do the, we do that too. Um, yeah. The, the pink putter app is so useful i like to say in every fitting there's the club the swing and the ball and so you know in our putter fittings one of the things we need to find out is what are you doing with that club i can't just look at you and go oh yeah you're a little inside out there yeah, right. oh you're you know your lie angle or your loft the ping app just takes an iphone and it uses the gyroscopes and the internal tools and they're fine-tuned so that you as you're putting it gives us a really really good understanding of what you did on each putt yeah and then as an average huge Mm -hmm. um because there's no one that has cornered the market on perfection but ping has done such a great job in getting us a lot closer to the right putter for you um and then you start taking a look at all the different shapes you've got all the different models you've got all the different grips Mm -hmm. that you can put on like every company does this to some degree but for ping i think they they do it with the widest breadth yeah they do the other one is is certainly got to be mentioned is the the Odyssey the Callaway Odyssey stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. The AI oh, yeah. one and the AI milled are outrageously good. Yeah. And I think one for the AI milled, um, that's a little bit more pricey. There's a few or less, or there's just a fewer models yeah. to that. But that also goes right into the price bracket as the Pings or goes into the Scotty Camerons and such too, uh, and Betnardis because mm-hmm. that that's a phenomenal lineup. All of the putters that are on the market that are coming out this year, um, we talk about Bettinardi has some deeper grooves. Scotty Cameron's got deeper grooves. Ping's got some deeper milling grooves on it. Is everyone's kind of gone to a little bit of a deeper milling groove? What that does is it gives it allows for some more points of contact, but it also kind of softens the sound. It's, yeah. it's a little bit more quiet. Yep, which so, I prefer. You know. Yeah, and that 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 really is a golfer preference. It's absolutely yeah. one of. The, oh yeah. So, like, even in the ping, um, ping app, one of the things it asks for is something softer or maybe a little bit louder. Mm-hmm. So it's asking for it because yeah. those are some of the choices that we want to make. With and it's it. also they have the options. Like, that's, yeah. that's the cool part. You know, there's there's right. it'll recommend something that is softer a little bit, you know, based on the build mm-hmm. or the face, whatever. And the, so the same thing goes into, like, the AI one where you yep. talk about these putters. That technology is trying to increase speed when when it's needed to help gain distance control on off center hits. Yeah. And I think everyone is trying to do that. Yeah. Um it's the same kind of deal but, with with driver heads. It's, you know, the yeah. marketing this year was I, MOI, you know, miss hits, where right. how far is the ball going on miss hits. You know, putter it's not as uh noticeable maybe, uh but you certainly feel it, right? When you miss hit one off the heel mm-hmm. or toe and you kind of know, oh, this is going to you know, this isn't going to quite get to the hole or whatever. Well, uh, one, one of the things to see that technology being addressed is cool. Absolutely. One of the things we've seen in the style, you've talked about like um an answer style putter or or it's a little bit thinner yep. of a blade, um whether you call it Newport or however you want to describe it for any of the companies, the kind of the double wide version, the slightly bigger yeah. version of that blade is gaining a ton of popularity all over the part of it is that it's a little bit more stable so it's it's that rotation yep. it um the other part of that too is like we 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 look for trends on the PGA tour oh yeah like the PGA tour is where we see guys making putts or missing putts but also we we look to those guys as our trend setter and then we're like oh you say if you see it on the PGA tour you're more likely to go look at that yep. on the company's I mean, as, website. As someone who just ordered a AI1 Cruiser Jailbird, yeah. I ho- totally can attest to that. So, 
And and I think there are so many uh, there are so many options out there. Again, where we talk about a fitting, well, we have all these options. This is the best part is for you to to literally come in and start looking at the options. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the best part. Um, we should the, also mention uh, the Scotty Cameron line too. Yeah, brand new, just launched. Pre order starting. Um, this lineup is certainly um, a, a, it's a little bit of a departure from the previous lineups, and and here's why. Two things are main focus. One, most of the stuff has gotten a little bit more compact. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, but try also, not to make it so. Yeah, you know, the the surface area, I guess, of what you see at a dress is definitely more yeah. compact. Yeah. Um, what the other thing that's that's happened to this is they've really refined the alignment feature. Mm-hmm. So what they what they've tried to do is give us different alignment features. To, uh, for instance, if you have three dots on the top, if you have a line or lines on the top, um, if you have this kind of like this arrowhead pointing mm-hmm. um, on the eleven model, you get back into like the nine model, and the nines have two two uh, lines a little bit closer yeah. together to kind of run like tracks. Um, they've also kind of taken out um, they've taken out pockets of uh, what used to be um, kind of the base of it. Mm-hmm. So they've taken that anonized aluminum and they've cre- created more holes through that, kind of maybe more as a visual. And they've also slimmed, uh, they've also kind of trimmed up the lines and angled everything towards the, all the angles point towards that middle point mm-hmm. of the putter to help, again, both with not only alignment, but even while you're putting is is having that thing moving towards the ball and towards yeah. the target line. Um, they made a little bit of a deeper mill mark. It's the same thing that they've got going on there. Um, you can get different grips with Scotty Cameron, but the thing about Scotty Cameron is he's got his grip on it. It's a unique grip. I know the, uh, talking with the guys last night, just in uh, you know the fitters, it's like, oh, I don't like this grip. I don't like this grip. And I put it you know in my hands, and I'm like, this is awesome. Totally preference yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. right? Um, he's got a bunch of different grips, but the one that's coming on the new Phantom lineup is is re, it, it tapers off on the top and the bottom so that the middle is actually a little bit thicker and it kind of has a little bit of a point coming off on the top which is unique it's different but the reality is you're trying to achieve a different feel in your hand so you can still get if you wanted to um, with custom orders you can still get previous generations of the grips yeah right yeah um, and they're going to offer that but I, yeah I also, when I was on the PGA show, they I did get to kind of feel this new grip, and it was it is it is a little different, but I yeah. I, I, I can definitely see kind of the ergonomic sort of like it it makes sense in a way when you grip the putter kind of the, yeah you know the, I guess the most most taut way of how to grip a putter. So. Well, and what what also becomes unique of that is we talk about the grip style, right? Um, you know, a pistol grip where it has curvature on the back yeah. that you're holding onto. It's exactly what you said. It's ergonomics. It's how does that hand sit? Because if I have something that's straighter. My hand actually sits differently. Yeah. So right. my 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 wrist positions. The other thing is, um, that was the current grip that they were putting on the new Phantom lineup is a little bit more of an ode to the old Baby T grip, mm. which is that it kind of has a little bit of that texture. Um, oh yeah. On the backside, but it also has a little bit more of a flat flat paddle front, which is, I I still actually have. Well, first of all, I have way too many Scotty Camerons. We've already <laughs> gone over this. But I have um, the Baby T grip on probably six or seven models because that, for me, I just love the way that felt. Mm. So for, it's ergonomic for me. Uh, and yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that that's also one I, I absolutely want to highlight in terms of putters, though. I also want to highlight Bettinardi. Yeah. They... But again, talking about the different models, you talk about like Ping has so many different models. Uh, Betnardi still runs with a few different lineups, right? They run with a Mantum, a, a Mallet lineup like the Innovi. They still studio have stock they still have Studio Stock, and they still have Queen, Queen B. B. Yep. And so you you talk about I want di- maybe a different sound or a different look. The Queen B has got a real fine honeycomb, so it's it's a lot louder and crisp. Um, you get into the studio and you get uh, a little deeper milling. Mm-hmm. They have one that's kind of that double wide, like an answer yeah, style. Um, uh, it's like, like a, twenty-eight or something is the number of it. I think so, but it's also but it's also got a sound slot in it. Mm. We used to call this kind of like the beach cut, which was I know a Scotty Cameron term, I, and I, I think it, I I'd have to go look at what it was in the ping, but it started way back with ping because of the sound of a ping. It yeah. literally ping. It literally was a ping. Yeah. yeah. And um, so that creates almost a different unique sound um, with with the the extreme weighting. And you talk about like, the, uh, there are so many different choices out there. And 
I think putters, putters have more choices than any other club category. There are more models per company than anything else. Yeah. We talk about like a wedge. You might have a wedge and there might be 27 different loft or grind combinations, but, but it's still just the model. wedge. Yeah. We start talking about all these different putters. Um, this is also where I look at it. A putter fitting is probably the least used option for us. But it but is probably the most on the course. Yeah, but probably is the most important. Yeah. Because if you're making putts, your score should go down. Yeah. And if you're making putts, we think we'd have a little bit more fun. And yeah. you know, putt putts putting accounts for about forty percent of our strokes. Yep. And so if all of a sudden we we always talk about this is a big Larry thing too. Yeah. Speed, speed, speed. Yeah. We get speed control. But if we do stop this is um Callaway, their Odyssey lineup, the AI one is all about reducing three putts. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting more speed to get closer to the hole, even on a miss, to get you um, less three putts. That's what they're highlighting at. That's what we're highlighting at, too. Yeah, we're like all that. looking at um, less three putts is going to make your – should make your score go yeah. down. Yeah, I think there's there's not a, an area of the game that has a strong correlation to playing better than yeah. making more putts. And, I mean, you know, you say yeah. about like someone, well, you know, am I good enough for a fitting? There's not a single person who could say that about putting. Like if yeah. if we're gonna help with with your game, just start with a putter fitting. Yeah, it's it's something everyone can do. Everyone can practice regardless of skill or athleticism. It, that is the one thing you can go play putt putt golf. You can go play mini golf. You can go to a putting course. You can go out to your local golf course and putt. It's a part of the game that is accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. So I like that. We we'd love to see people in for that. So yeah. sign up for some putter fitting. I like that. That's a good mm -hmm. way to wrap it up. I think yeah. is is kind of, uh, you know, promoting those putter fittings. Mm -hmm. um, we have great technology at the stores, too, to, to yeah. help with that. Um, the Quintech stuff is awesome. Um, also, the Ping Putter app as well on the, mm -hmm. on the little uh, iPhone. So golfers, go get that fitting. If it's a putter fitting, that's awesome. Otherwise, of course, any of the other clubs in your bag you might want to get fit for. See someone like Tyler, schedule that fitting either in store at any of our store locations, or we have the online team as well that can uh, have that good conversation with you, get everything dialed in. So... Tyler, thanks for joining today. I really oh, appreciate thanks, it. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate it.